And the enemy is so insidious and clever with the way that he attacks us. He doesn't attack us in ways that he knows that we will defeat him in, like that he that we have power in, right? He comes in those subtle ways that when we're not on our stuff, that he can prevail. He looks for the tiniest crack in our armor, in our in our in our our vessels to penetrate and to attack and he doesn't need much to go ham and he knows exactly where we need God the most. And so when we don't tap God first and instead we go to our own devices in order to feel safe, to feel comforted, to feel like we're powerful, um, that's exactly where the enemy wants us to be. So I've had to reframe myself. I've had to lean on my husband because I, I haven't had it in me this week. I have not had it in me this week. I, I'm spiraling. I'm spiraling. I can't, I can't say more. I'm spiraling. Shout out to me for having a mental breakdown and needing to redo my makeup. I feel like I've been spiraling all week long. Two really important things happened this week happening this week and oh my goodness I can't even think straight the whole er, er, mm, mm. I'm running out of my bronzer drops I can't get it make it work had a whole low-key high-key mental breakdown today fun times I must be on the cusp of something because the way that the enemy has been attacking me have you ever been so stressed that it like it hurts you inside like it, it hurts your body like you're just feeling so anxious so ramped up like my nervous system has been on 10 for the last few days and i just like don't understand why i'm like in the midst of I guess figuring it out at, at, I hope soon because I feel like I'm just losing it like I feel like I've been a crazy person earlier I had a whole moment because I just felt like every tab in my brain that's been open for the last six months had like red flags or red notification blaring glaring just just beeping and and i just could not like think straight my son micah starts acting up he punches his sister in the face let's just call it what it is and he's been doing that like punching people his siblings really lately and we're like why is this behavior happening? What's going on? Like, what do we need to do? And I kind of had a moment where I'm just like, telling my husband, like, we need to do something. Like, he can't keep doing this. And he's like, babe, like, we already are doing the things that we need to do for him. Like, we're loving him. We're correcting the behavior when it happens. We're, tr we're not responding to him out of anger as much as we can, like, because if he's already amped up, us being amped up with him is not the right way to handle it either. And I agree, but today I just did not have it in me. Today I just did not have it in me to like, like, like I feel like something in my brain broke. Like there's no, the processing isn't processing the patience isn't patiencing like i just didn't have it and i went into a full like anxiety attack which i have not had in a long time and something that mark pointed out to me was i really only have them before i do important things for god and I've been spiraling. I felt like I was spiraling all week. 
and I had a conversation yesterday. I went and visited one of my old sorority sisters um, in the hospital. I hadn't talked to her in a really long time. Um, I'm not sure how many of you know this about me, but I used to be a member of Delta Sigma Theta Sorority Incorporated. I'm no longer a member. I denounced and renounced that membership um, last year. I did it without talking to any of my line sisters because I knew that if I did, even hearing their voices or seeing their faces would make me reconsider what I knew God told me to do. I'm about to start crying all over again and I literally just cried off my mascara and I don't want to cry it off again because I have stuff to do today. I have to be on camera today. <sighs> oh, odd. And she's actually experiencing something incredibly hard for anyone to experience, but especially someone her age. She is 34 years old, young, vibrant, yet randomly out of nowhere gets diagnosed with an incredibly rare autoimmune disease that flips her life upside down and she has lost mobility in her hands feet legs like she can move here and there but they don't know what's wrong with her she's having to relearn how to walk she's lived in a hospital setting for the last five weeks has at minimum five more weeks to go and I hadn't seen her in a couple years, so to see her in that state yesterday, just like, uh, don't cry, 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 don't cry. Seeing her like that broke my heart. And at the same time, I was so grateful to have the time with her, to catch up with her, to talk, to really dig into why I made the decision that I made, but also just like catch up on life. And she's always been one of those people that has seen me beyond, you know, my affiliation with the organization that brought us together and, um, I really feel like we have a sisterhood beyond the sorority, um, but it hasn't been an easy road navigating those relationships. I really lost all of them um, in, in, a, in, in the action of being obedient to what the Holy Spirit put on my heart to do. And it's been a year and I haven't, I haven't reconnected with any of them outside of yesterday and it felt so good to talk to her and be with her and just be whatever comforting presence I could be for her in that time and you know she asked me if I would be okay with her putting together just like a little time to chat eat together break bread with some of our um, other sisters and I, I agreed because I haven't known where have they stood with me. I know that a number of them have been upset with me, have feel types of ways about me and that's been hard for me to live with but it wasn't something that I was willing to allow compromise my walk with Christ and what I know God led me to do and um There was a lot of things that happened from me leaving my wallet at home, knowing that I had to go back and get it because I couldn't get into the hospital without an ID. I had my two daughters with me, Emery, who's five months, and Sarai, who's five, and they came with me to the hospital. They came with me to the hospital and we went later in the day. And so it was getting darker and I parked in the wrong parking lot. I had to, I walked all the way to the right building, but realized I parked in the wrong spot. And if I didn't move the car, then 
we were gonna have to be walking at night by ourselves and I didn't wanna do that with the girls. So I had to walk us all the way back, put everybody back in their car seats, you know, get out the parking lot. I get stuck in the parking lot. I get stuck in the parking lot. My card isn't working. Emery is screaming her head off, crying. And I'm just like, I still haven't even gotten to the building. I haven't even gotten to where I need to be. And I've already th like had to drive 30 minutes, then drive another 30 minutes back, then go back the right way to just like turn around, like just to go see this girl. And so I'm having like a little like moment in the car as I'm getting reparked, finally get out of the parking lot or parking garage that I was stuck in. And I'm calling my husband and I'm just like, babe, like I'm having a moment. Like I just feel like so like things just keep happening to keep me from going and seeing her. And he just like called me down. He was like, hey, do you want to FaceTime me? I'll help you figure out where you're supposed to be. Like, you know, just breathe, blah, blah, blah. And so finally, I, I make it to where I'm supposed to be. It was right there. It wasn't even far. I got to the right place I was supposed to be. I went in and saw her and spent a few hours with her, two or three hours with her. And I'm so glad that I did. And I'm so glad I didn't let those little things throw me off because I felt like that conversation, that time spent was redemptive. It was a gift because the Lord knows like how much I have grieved those relationships and wishing that I could help them understand why I did what I did and why I haven't been around and I've missed them and I have felt a loss um, of those relationships and it's just been hard. Um, every time Delta comes up, I get emotional. I have been in conversations recently where other women who are deltas are either wearing their paraphernalia or mentioning delta or their line sisters and i have sat and i've been quiet and for me as someone who joined the organization and was like super delta and you know chapter president and like went hard for that organization and just was always like so wrapped up in it to be in a position now where I'm talking to women that I absolutely connect with and am feeling like so much synergy with and not say and not say that I'm also a part of what you're a part of and I understand you and I connect with you on such a deeper level than but 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 I don't anymore. I don't connect on that level and um those moments are hard because there are silent moments where I'm reminded of the decision that I've made and I'm also reminded of what I've lost. And I found peace in those moments. I haven't had, you know, like breakdown cry sessions after those times, but I think the Lord knew in my heart what that was for me. Um, and honestly I don't even know why I'm doing this video I just I guess I'm wanted to give an update of what it's like when you walk away later as time goes on I feel like people see denouncing videos and they you know feel whatever they feel and and whether you're the person denouncing or you're the person watching the person denounce or whatever or hearing about it there's all these feelings all these judgments all these opinions and um i can say that the lord has been my shepherd he has guided me he has brought me to places of peace he has brought me to a position where my heart can feel all the things that it needs to feel to navigate I feel free, even though freedom doesn't come with no issues or troubles or, 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 or hard moments. I do have them still, but I have a safe place in him that I run to, that I can go to every time I'm feeling down, feeling insecure, feeling afraid. I have a safe place now that I didn't have before. And I feel that 
I am finally in a place where it's safe enough for me to reapproach those relationships and reapproach those women that I love so much without feeling like my obedience would be in jeopardy. And at the very same time, I am not running past where the father has me and I'm not going to rush or force anything on anyone. So I am hopeful for what God can do with many of these relationships that I had um, and leaving the ones at rest that are that are at rest. That's where I'm at with it. Um, God has created a community for me with sisters and brothers in Christ that I am so, so grateful for because I can be my whole self. I can um, operate in a healthy manner with them. I can be my fullest self and recognize that it's okay to change, that growth looks different for everybody and that my journey is not one to convict anyone else, but it is just to show what it looks like to allow the Lord to lead your life fully. And I don't want to ever be a gatekeeper to what this walk really looks like, what it really feels like, because there is a lot of heavy feelings. I won't even say heavy feelings. I'll say big feelings, big emotions, just in everything, because I feel like so many of us are numbed to what life really is and have been numbed out of a way to cope with whatever we've gone through and we have shut off ourselves as a way to protect ourselves and we pick and choose what we want to feel when we want to feel them we allot these specific times and ways that we're allowed to feel and what i've gained so much in this year has actually been in the unchaining of my heart the courage to explore how i really feel about things and the level of vulnerability within myself with the father with christ and with the people around me that allows me to be free and to stay free and to feel the forgiveness that is on my life and to only focus on that and to only live in that place and that has put a target on me the enemy has been attacking me this week my god i started having headaches like I used to have years ago. And I'm thinking, am I having like a hormone hormonal thing? Like I'm postpartum, am I going through? You know, and I'm just like, no, like this is, this feels different. This feels like the enemy is trying to attack me through my body, through me not remembering to take my supplements the way that I've been taking them, not taking care of myself, not drinking enough water, thinking that I've got to do other things. And that those other things are more important than making sure that I'm healthy. Like I, I need to, you know, over index over here because I'm feeling weak over here. Like I've been doing that. And the enemy is so insidious and clever with the way that he attacks us. He doesn't attack us in ways that he knows that we will defeat him in. Like that he that we have power in, right? He comes in those subtle ways that when we're not on our stuff that he can prevail. He looks for the tiniest crack in our armor, in our in our in our our vessels to penetrate and to attack and he doesn't need much to go ham and he knows exactly where we need God the most and so when we don't tap God first and instead we go to our own devices in order to feel safe, to feel comforted, to feel like we're powerful um that's exactly where the enemy wants us to be so i've had to reframe myself i've had to lean on my husband because I, I haven't had it in me this week i have not had it in me this week on my own i have had to ask him like and and communicate to him not a lot but just say i, I i'm spiraling i'm spiraling i can't i can't say more i'm spiraling my anxiety is building i'm spiraling and or just saying i need a hug in moments when i usually can't even vocalize that like sometimes i just need to feel somebody holding me to bring me back to earth to bring me back here to the present 
because sometimes when your mind starts racing and that spirit of anxiety keeps going and going and going and going and going, you can't stop the shit by yourself. You need help. So my husband helped me today. I'm grateful for him because the father was able to bring me comfort through him today. Christ was able to help me through him today. And I know that the target is on my back and it ain't going nowhere. And I gotta remind myself of that, that I'm not doing this by myself, that I have help and that whatever I'm being called to, whatever I'm being asked to do is important because there's a lot of eyes on me and I'm not even talking about people. So I, I have to continue on and I will continue on. And there's no stopping what God is doing in my life. There's no stopping what God is doing in my family, in my marriage, in my husband. There's no stopping what God is doing. There's no stopping what he's doing. The weapons will form, they shall not prosper.